welcome to this new lecture that is on equivalence relations so if what is the equivalence relation equivalence relation are used to relate objects that are similar in some way so the definition is a relation on a set a is called an equivalence relation if it is reflexive symmetric and transitive so two elements that are related by an equivalence relation are are called equivalent right so we call that the equivalent elements so uh, for the equivalence relation they must be reflexive symmetric and transitive so now see here what is the property of reflexive so now just revise here since r is reflexive means that every element is equivalent to itself means Uh, ordered pair A A belongs to R. Relation for every A belongs to A. Next is symmetric. What is symmetric? Is since R is symmetric, A is equivalent to B whenever B is equivalent to A. So we can represent it. A B belongs to R. Then B A belongs to R. Now the transitive. For transitive, if A and B are equivalent and B and C are equivalent. then a and c are equivalent so this is transitive property ordered pair ab belongs to r and bc belongs to r then ac belongs to r so obviously if these three properties are hold in any relation so that is called the equivalence relation so now let's take an example for this if r be a relation in the set of integers z defined by here our relation is defined is like that the ordered pair elements are xy where xy belongs to the integers and x minus y is divisible by 6 so what is the property of the elements of in relation r that is x minus y is divisible by 6 so now we have to prove that r is an equivalence relation so it means that uh the elements of the relation are they elements should be satisfied this property x minus y is divisible by 6 so now let's the proof of this so here we assume that and know that x is belongs to the integer so first for the equivalence relation we need to prove reflexive then symmetric then transitive if these three properties are hold with this relation then we can say that this is the equivalence relation so now first come to the reflexive so in reflexive we uh, have that we have to take the same element means we take x x elements so now if we take the element x so now uh, check that this uh, property will hold or not so put here x and in place of y is uh, obviously again x so x minus x x minus x what is x minus x when we do x minus x that is 0 and we see that we know that 0 is divisible by 6 0 is always divisible by 6 it means that this uh, this uh, ordered pair x x this is hold this property it means that the x is related to x for all x belongs to the integers so we can say that r is reflexive clear now come to the symmetric for symmetric what we do we have to show that x is related to y then y is related to x so now when we take x is related to y it means that these elements should be follow this property x minus y is divisible by 6 so we take this that x related to y and we show that y is related to x so now we have this property x minus y is divisible by 6 now after this step uh, what we do here you can see that if any number is divisible by 6 right so its negative is always divisible by 6 right negative doesn't affect in the divisibility right so we can write this negative of this number x minus y is also the divisible by 6 now if we multiply this negative in the 
inside the braces then we get y minus x so y minus x is divisible by 6 so if we have this y minus x is divisible by 6 what it shows it show that y is related to x right by the definition by the given relation it shows that y is related to x it means that this is a symmetric relation clear so now come to the transitive so for transitive what we show we show that we have to take here three elements x y z x is related to y and y is related to z that will we have we have this and we have to show this x is related to z so now we take that x is related to y and y related to z it will be we have this and we have to show that x is related to z so now what is the relation x related to y that is x minus y is divisible by 6 and y is related to z it means that y minus z is divisible by 6 it will be have so now if this is divisible by 6 and this is divisible by 6 so its sum is always divisible by 6 so we can write that x minus y plus y minus z is divisible by 6 now when we solve this then we get x minus z is divisible by 6 and what it shows x minus z is divisible by 6 so we can say that x is related to z according to the given relation so if we have x is related to y and y is related to z then we get x is related to z it means that this holds the property transitive so these all properties reflexive symmetric and transitive hold this relation it means that we can say that r is an equivalence relation clear how to prove that then any relation is a equivalence relation okay so now let's take an another example for this here we have for two real numbers these are the real numbers theta and phi we define theta is related to phi if and only if secant square theta minus tan square phi is equal to 1. So here what is our relation if our two numbers are related by this definition so like secant square theta minus tan square phi equal to 1. So we have to show that R is an equivalence relation. Now so now let's do the proof of this first for the reflexive part we have to assume that theta belongs to a real number right so now we have to take only the one element so now first for the reflexivity we have that if theta is belongs to r it means that secant square theta minus now we have only one number so but from of this we have to put only theta one number so secant square theta minus tan square theta so when we put secant square theta minus tan square theta and uh, I think this is equal to 1. You earlier studied in your uh, last classes, means in, uh, like 9th, 10th, that trigonometry, right? So you have to apply that trigonometry here. From this, we have one relation was there that is secant square theta minus 10 square theta equal to 1. We have this is a, a, a form, a formula is there. So this is true. We know that. We know that this is true. It means that theta is related to theta. Means the, the, this is hold this property. Right? So we can say that theta is related to theta. For all theta belongs to R. So our R is reflexive. Now come to the symmetric. So for the symmetric, we have that theta is related to phi. So and we need to show that phi is related to theta then it is symmetric. So now if we have theta is related to phi it means that secant square theta minus tan square phi equal to 1. We have this. Now how to convert this means uh, we have to in, uh, in symmetric we have to interchange theta in place of phi and phi is in place of theta. So how can we come? So we have to convert this secant in tan and this tan in secant square theta so how we know that secant square theta is 1 plus tan square theta by this so secant square theta is 1 plus tan square theta minus and what is tan square phi in terms of secant you can write this secant square phi minus 1 by the trigonometry right this is equal to 1 now Again, solve this, then we get 1 plus 10 square theta minus secant square phi plus 1 equal to 1. So now, 
you see here uh, this 1 plus 1 2 and 2 minus 1 1 so we have here 1 and this is uh, minus 1 and secant square theta if we take the minus common here so we get after solving this secant square phi minus 10 square theta is equal to 1 and now you can see this is hold this property only the interchange the elements so it means that phi is related to theta so now this is the symmetric relation clear so now come to the transitive so in transitive we have to take the three elements so theta phi and because here these represents the angles so we uh, take three elements theta phi and psi so now we have to show that theta is related to phi we have this phi is related to psi we have this and we need to show that theta is related to psi so now use here the relation between theta and phi that is secant square theta minus 10 square phi equal to 1 and if theta is related to psi it means that secant square phi minus 10 square psi equal to 1 so now next if we add these two then we get secant square theta minus 10 square phi plus secant square phi minus 10 square psi is equal to 1 plus 1 2 we add right part and the left part now when we solve this secant square theta and come to the write this secant square phi minus 10 square phi so uh, minus 10 square psi equal to 2 now we know that the earlier notation secant square phi minus 10 square phi what is this this value is 1 right so now after solving this we get secant square theta minus 10 square psi so this is equal to 1 so now from this relation we can uh, show that theta is related to psi we can write that theta is related to psi right so it means that this whole this property so this is the transitive relation so now we uh, showed that that uh, this is reflexive symmetric and transitive so we can say that our r is an equivalence relation clear okay so now like that you have to show that any relation which you have given you have to uh, satisfy these three properties uh, reflexive symmetric and transitive if this hold all these properties then you can say that your relation is the equivalence relation clear so now next come to the partial order relation what is the partial order relation a relation r on a set s is called a partial order relation if it is reflexive anti-symmetric and transitive right if any relation hold these three properties reflexive anti-symmetric and transitive then it is called the partial order relation so now what is the reflexive just again revise here what is reflexive a is related to a for all a belongs to s because here our set is s now anti-symmetric what is the property of anti-symmetric a is related to b and b is related to a if a equal to b right then transitive a is related to b and b is related to c then a is related to c so now a set s together with the partial order r is called a partial order set or we can say that is a post set and denoted by s r right sr means the relation r on the set s so this is our the partial order relation which satisfies all these three relations so now let's take an example for this prove that the greater or equal to we have this relation is the greater or equal to this is a partial order relation on z set of integers so now let's prove of this first we have we need to prove that this relation is the reflexive relation so for the reflexive relation we take an element a that is belongs to the z since a is greater than equal to a for every integer a this property hold means a is greater than equal to a because equal to condition is also here so this is always true that a is greater than equal to a any number is greater than equal to itself right so this is true it means that this greater than equal to relation is a reflexive relation clear now second is the anti-symmetric 
so for the anti symmetric we have to take the two elements from the set of integers so now since a is greater than b and b is greater than a when it is possible that a is greater than b and b is greater than a it is possible only a is equal to b right if our a equal to b then a is greater than b and b is greater than a is possible so this is the anti symmetric means greater than equal to Uh, relation is the anti symmetric relation now next come to the transitive so for the transitive we have to take the three elements from the set a integer set a that is a b uh, integer set sorry z so we have to take the elements a b c so a is greater than b and b is greater than c then a is greater than c so here mistake is here sorry here this is a is greater than equal to c so therefore greater than equal to is a transitive relation so now this hold this property reflexive anti symmetric transitive so it means that this greater than equal to relation is the partial order relation so z greater than equal to is a post set like that greater than equal to you, uh, the less than equal to if we have the relation is less than equal to that is also hold the partial order relation clear how to show this and what is the partial order relation so now thank you today's lecture is completed now be happy be healthy